Hey guys, it's me again. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I just got off of a topic and I kind of got a real inspiration as I was doing this. Like, I got off of a phone conversation that got me this idea about what to talk about today. And then I just got a confirmation right before I was doing it that I'm going to tell you guys about. But So it told me I was on the money. I was on the money with this topic. So the topic I want to talk about is, has... I go through my own process and journey of uh, being a channel or a medium of some sort. I notice that I have a hard time reconciling this idea within myself, which is that every time I come on here, I'm always trying to teach people how to find that inner knowing within themselves. So it's kind of ironic that the services I offer so that people can get my guidance in order to uh, forward their lives. So you could see how that kind of throws a conundrum and or, you know, a little crux there, right? So ultimately, I was like, you know what? I'm like, I think with all of what I try to bring forth is always that you have to look within yourself. So the thing is, is that <laughs> I decided to start speaking about this and I'm going to talk about the funny situation a little after. And you're going to see how this all pieces together so beautifully. But I was like... How can I show people how they tap into this intuition, this higher awareness, right? And I was like, well, you know what? I'm like, inner knowing is the key to all of this in our lives because we're sometimes always looking outside of ourselves. Like why I brought this up too was because I just got off the phone with someone who had gotten one, of, one or two of those like automated um, astrologer type of chart deals and then uh, they were asking me, like, oh, what do you think of this? And I was like, well, I'm like, uh, most of the time they're asking you to pay for some type of service in order to get some answers out of them. And I was like, it's your it's your choice. But I was like, you know, I think you're doing everything on your own just fine. And you should look, you know, what do you think about it? And I was like, if everything in this message is telling you that it's all within you, why are they asking you to pay for it to, you know, to correspond with them? And he was like, you know what? You're right. He's like, uh, I should look within. And I was like, yeah, I was like, that's how it should be for everyone. So you could see where I get into situations with my own type of divination work, because I myself also feel like. I may just be a tool, but I don't think that I should be um, someone who's going to tell you that my opinion is better than yours. I always think that everyone's intuition and their discernment is the one that they should always follow. But trusting in your inner knowing is something that a lot of people are challenged with, so I'm going to talk about it. It allows you to unlock further levels of yourself and your awareness and your consciousness. And if you're somebody that really struggles with this, I have some ti some tips that I want to present in this that will help. And I want to kind of uh, differentiate between two different uh, forms of awareness. So I would say the further levels of interaction you have with yourself um, shows your intuition that you trust you. And once your intuition, and I'm saying this as an external thing, but it's really not, and it's an internal thing. It's a more about trust more than anything else. You trusting in your awareness, you trusting in your inner knowledge, and really meaning it and really feeling it inside is how you build this connection. And it starts with your intuition. So what I will say as someone who does connect quite profusely almost all the time I would say that uh, things that helped me along the way was to test it because realistically in this day and age, it's like if you're someone who's still having issues with coming out of this type of matrix that you're in and you're wondering if at this time you should follow what your intuitions are saying, I always say test it. So the way I've always tested it is parameters of like odds, if you want to put it that way. I don't like to put parameters of odds, but I'm, I'm saying this in a way of saying spiritual odds, okay? So let's say, for example, you get, there's two different types of, of intuition or, or <laughs> premonitory higher self um, intuition that comes to you almost daily or weekly or monthly, whatever the case may be. And the two of them is more of inklings, you get inklings, or you get gnawing urges, gnawing urges. 
So I, I, I know I'm giving two varied um, types of intuition, but they are very different. And I want to showcase how you should test them so that you know that you're on the right track with your own intuition. So I would say, let's say, for example, if you're even hinted throughout the day, right, to take a different track home, a different route home, a different road, a different way. How you get this intuition to do this is because you usually do something routine. You notice the intuition is directing you to do something else. The only way you can really test the difference is to follow it. And you can put it in parameters of like, oh, out of 10 times I followed it or tried to follow it 10 times. And what you'll notice is that once you start to follow it, let's just say if you're trying to really test it, because think about it, if you're somebody who's logical and you want to understand intuition even from that level, the only way is to prove it, right? Is to test it. So let's say, for example, you get an inkling that tells you, okay, you're going to go down this road today. Now, you might get these inklings through, you know, a year, maybe two, three, four times. But what's interesting is to notice if you, let's say, caught time, if you caught... Um, uh, let's say a better, a better situation after the fact of taking that route? Did you have interactions because of the route? The thing is, is that the, you being told to take a different route is the inkling. So the thing is, is that what occurred the number of times that you did take this other route? If you were somebody who chose not to take the route, then you're not truly testing your intuition. So what I would say to you is that if you are somebody that's like, well, I don't know if I can listen to what's going on, you know, why am I going to take that route? I know it's faster the other way. You start to process all, process out your intuition. You negate it. So the thing is, is that you're not offering yourself that chance to test it. So I would say to you as someone who may be curious, please take advantage of things like that. The next one I'm going to talk about is something, this, this is a very small inkling. But I'm telling you, this is one that happens to people all the time and they may or may not notice it. There is another type of inkling, which is an up-tempo or to down. Uh, it's like if you think about gears in a car, upshift, downshift. So the thing is, is that sometimes in life you'll notice, like, let's say you're on the road and you're getting all kinds of red lights. Or you notice that um, when you're walking, let's say, on the sidewalk or you're... You're trying to reach a bus or whatever the case may be. You'll notice that people keep getting in your way one after another. It's like normally on any other day that you're not trying to get somewhere. You have all these people like interceding and getting in front of you. That is indicating to you that you need to downshift or you need to take a down tempo because your intuition and your consciousness is showing you that you are needing to take a different stance with your current situation. And you'll notice that if you slow down in those situations, that it's creating a pace for you that is intuitively not against the grain. So the thing is, again, let's say, for example, you're in a situation where all of those things, instead of pushing through that situation, like you normally would saying, oh, I'm late or I got to catch that bus. The world is showing you an inkling. Okay. The world is showing you slow down. Now, the thing is, again, like I said, if you want to test it, test it. Next time that that down tempo ex expression of self is happening in front of your face, let's say cars are just packed or, you, you, like I said, you're seeing the red lights everywhere. Everything is showing you stop, stop, stop. When you take notice of those, if you've always pushed through the stop, you always know what took place that way. So if you do the opposite and you actually follow the inkling and slow down, you may notice that certain little prosperities of maybe you get to breathe, maybe you get to reassess something, maybe you get to change a course. You have to understand that these inklings, even though they are physical, they are there to prevent you or, or guide you or slow you or up you. And what I mean by up tempo is like, let's say, for example, if you are going at a pace that is within rhythm to yourself, you'll notice that you get the green lights everywhere you go. You'll notice that you're making good time wherever you're going. It's because you're actually realizing the tempo of life, which is on an up tempo. So I know that sounds off, but this can happen, let's say, even with the downgrading 
Um, sometimes you get so busy in life and your inkling is to slow down and you'll notice that let's say your TV or your, your TV goes down, maybe the provider for like half an hour had to reboot your, your system, or let's say for example, your phone just died, but you thought you just charged it. Or you'll notice that your laptop is uh, going blank screen sometimes. Those physical slowdowns are telling you that you need to take a step back. Because these things are not happening normally. So they're inklings. They're things to show you how to take the tempo of your life. And what pace to take it at. So if you notice those things and instead of fighting and beating the computer to turn back on, you say to yourself, well, you know what? Maybe I should take five minutes. Maybe I should go make a tea. Maybe I should. That's the, that's the type of thinking in order to test it. So it's like instead of fighting against the grain, you're accepting that visual inkling of intuition of a higher consciousness speaking to you within your own parameters of existence. So that you can notice the differences that you feel with those inklings. So there's that. Now, <laughs> the gnawing urges, those are a totally different beast, okay? The gnawing urges are things that are so blatant. The gnawing urges are things like signs and symbols, names, numbers, uh, in your face. Uh, maybe you're um, recognizing people that look like a person. Maybe you're hearing songs, you're seeing... Another one that I'll say when it's a uh, gnawing urges, okay, this is one that's funny. And if you do take notice to these, they're very impactful in your higher awareness and also connecting with your place in a manifested understanding of your intuition, really and truly, okay? Let's say, for example, you are having issues with your partner, or maybe you're even in a separation, Right. And then it's like you run into a couple on the street who's fighting and you see that couple fighting and you're not really paying attention. You're going about your day, but you overhear something and it happens to be the exact problem that you had when you or the same scenario or the same topic when you broke up with that person that you are dealing with. Right. That is giving you an intuition that whatever you've been thinking or feeling about that relationship may be on the right track. So like, let's say, for example, you were like, oh, um, I don't know if this person's right for me. We're still not seeing eye to eye. You see a scenario that shows you the exact same situation. What your intuition is showing you is that this is a gnawing urge. And what I mean by this is that the minute if you take heed or notice to that scenario that's unraveling from different characters in your life, but it's still talking about the same situation you're going through, you listen to it, you get a gnawing feeling at that very moment when you're hearing this situation ship going on outside of you. This is just an example. Hear me out. Now, the thing is, is that that gnawing feeling you're getting is telling you what the answer is. You're automatically getting this feeling of like, oh, that sounds like our fight. Oh, I still don't. Oh. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is so blatant. Now, the thing is, is that if you didn't take notice to that situation unraveling in front of you, you would still be pondering it. But those physical showcases of your higher um enlightened version of I guess premonition and also intuition is showing you that this situation and how you felt at that moment is really how you truly feel overall and if you look at it from that perspective you realize what the answer is if you wanted to go towards the person or if you didn't these situations are trying to show you the answer to your own question it's giving you an, an, an innate knowing even though it's external so the thing is, is that what needs to happen is we actually have to pay attention to those gnawing urges or those in-your-face blatant things that keep appearing. And most of us will shrug it off and say, oh, you know, that's just this. And that goes back to my very first part about the inner knowing is that you have to trust you. That is the only way you make that first connection. Because the thing is, is that if you're always shrugging these things away, you don't trust you. You don't believe what you're seeing. You don't, you think you're just getting those ideas for the sake of it. Because you know how much we ignore as human beings? 
every day? Like, do you think that you're really perceiving every single person, every single thing, every single um, viewpoint? You're not. But when you catch those points, it's because it was meant for you to catch them. Your perception allowed you to see that scenario. Your perception allowed you to take notice of how it made you feel. And that's what intuition is. Your internal intuition is one that is sacred to you. So the thing is, is that no one externally can really tell you what you experienced and what you felt at that moment. So I hope you understand that that's a, a little different. Those gnawing urges will pop up in your life in, in ways that you think are, are, you know, happen all the time. It's like, that's actually more ridiculous to believe. Like, you just happen to run into two people fighting on the corner that are exactly fighting about the exact same thing. That probability makes more sense than you feeling like, oh, you know what? Maybe that's showing me something about how I feel about my old partner. Doesn't that sound a little more practical? I think it does. But I, I really try to enforce this with people because I'm like, I feel like in this time, especially as we're trying to rise and ascend and like take notice to all of what the universe is trying to show us, and, you know, and God encompasses that universe. I will say this about intuition and I will say this about higher consciousness. If it is meant for you to do, like, let's say, for example, it, it goes past the gnawing urges. The universe will actually thrust you or spit you out of your situation. There's always that form of intuition. <laughs> because realistically, like I said, your subconscious or even you could even say like your 5D is always kind of helping and co-create the manifestation. So let's say you have an inner want and, and understanding of what you want your life trajectory to be. You've said these things to yourself in a long time past, or you say them to yourself all the time and you may not recognize it, but you actually are co-creating and manifesting that destiny to occur. So the thing is, is that if you do not listen to all the inklings and all the gnawing urges, the universe that is co-creating with you in that 5D sense as well is also trying to shift you into that reality. So if you don't get there at the time, you may or may not have had to or need to be let's just say for the grand scheme of your existence on this planet or dimensionally etc your the universe will just thrust you in that direction in a more what some people would call towers but i don't like to use that term it is more of a tarot term but it is like that it's like they will the universe will just crumble you so you don't really have a choice so i'm saying you don't want to get your intuition to that level <laughs> Because that's really more difficult to navigate after the fact because the thing is you didn't take the little measures all the way. Like I was saying with your inklings and with your knowingness of your urges, right? You end up getting thrusted so it's more of a shock to the system. So I'm trying to show you guys how you can get these inklings and these knowing, uh, these gnawing urges to speak to you internally. And then use it. Ex it is external but it's for your internal and you can test it. And why I say this is all so synced up is because as I was putting this together, I had just thought, um, I was thinking about how I was like in, in complete, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm always here to be helpful for everyone. And yes, there is a part of me that does use my, my mediumship and my channeling abilities to help all of you. Yes, I do charge for what I do and I do get into issues with myself. But I was saying to myself at that very moment after I, I finished putting this together, I said, you know what, next week when my website's done, I'm going to tell everybody about it. And I'm like, whoever resonates with me comes and checks it out and maybe uh, sets up a session or two or whatever. And I honestly was like, I know this is going to be good. I know this is going to be great. And right then and there, my uh, keyboard that has been quiet for hours just like went dun, 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 dun. And I'm saying like, that's my intuition. That's, that's the world. That's the universe speaking to me and saying, you're right. That's the right way to think or that's the right way to be. So I'm not asking anyone to uh, sign up for my sessions. 
But I do think that if you are at a place, because the thing is, is maybe you need another nudge or you need another push off of a ledge, that's definitely where I take place because I feel like I can help you connect. And what happens is that once you feel assured and you trust yourself enough to say, you know what, this is where I need to be you end up not needing me anymore. And that's ultimately where I want to stand with a lot of the people that come to me. And it's not to say that it, it always ends up like that because I find like once I do interact with people, they do um, circle back and back and forth. But I feel like even though I'm saying to find it all in yourself, I also feel like I can be a total aid to people. So next week I will be promoting it, but I'm just saying I want people to also look inside and follow the inklings that they're being presented in their life and do it so that you can get the difference for yourself and figure out what's best for you. And with that said, I'll let you guys go tonight. If you do like what I'm saying, please like, please share, please subscribe. It's all a free gesture and I'm just saying what's up. So have a good night. Love you lots. Bye.